You are listening to Connection Loop, a podcast by Dub.com. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Ruben. Um, you are on Dub's podcast here, and I'm with Shelly Grierson. And um, she works at a company called Space Between as the director of marketing. And I'll let her get into that a little bit. But she also has a very interesting LinkedIn um, what is it? A, a it's it's or? sort of like it's called LinkedIn Ladies. So okay. if you search the hashtag LinkedIn Ladies on LinkedIn, okay. you'll see me come up. Yeah, effectively, it's it's a concept by a company called LinkedIn Local, and the whole idea is that we connect all these people on LinkedIn. But what's the value of the connection if we don't actually do anything with it? And people are really on guard on LinkedIn these days, and you know, understandably so, because you connect with someone and then instantly you get this automated sales email and you're just saying, oh my God, you yeah. know? So people are starting, the whole benefit of it is kind of, now people are getting their guard up, it's losing some of its shine. Yeah. And so the whole point of LinkedIn ladies is to provide um, this safe networking environment for ladies in the UK where I'm based um, to come and network together. And it's about having a glass of the old, you know, uh, wine and, <laughs> um, you know, just, and getting to know people as people. Um, cheers. Um, <laughs> you're supposed to look at eyes when you're oh, yes. Did you know that? Yes. Maybe that's a British thing. No, no, no. That's a good thing. I normally do that. Um, so, yeah, the whole point is to get to, to speak to people and to get to know them um, outside almost the business remit and, and the passing of business cards. So it's very non-salesy. But, yeah, I, I find it's been really well received, really well attended. And people actually, in terms of like job referrals and things like that, it does really well because we actually know each other after a couple mm -hmm. of networking sessions. Yeah. You're like, oh, this is a really cool guy. Like, yeah. I know him. He does this. Let's join the dots. And it does really well for business, um, actually cutting the business conversation out. Yeah. I mean, I think that's definitely something that I've seen more of people doing, which is just to bring their real selves and their mm -hmm. truth. You know, in networking, in building relationships, there's a lot more honesty, authenticity mm -hmm. I'm noticing. Um, I actually think a lot of that is inspired by young people and how they leverage social and social media and the type of content that they put out. And it became commonplace, ubiquitous, just to see Silly videos, fun videos, just people being themselves. So much more raw. Yeah. And what the interesting thing is, and I totally agree with you, and what the interesting thing is, is you're seeing high-end brands, quality brands, yeah. you know, the sort of the Chanel's, the Dior's, actually adopting some of those styles now. They're getting really street with it. So where typically they were very, very um, polished, and they still are in many senses, there is a very uh, casual element to what they're doing now, particularly on social. You yeah. know, to get that conversational right. style and to connect mm -hmm. with that level of audience. Right. So... I, I totally, I totally agree. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, well, the concept behind what I was trying to apply was absolutely that was sort of getting positive content out there for everyone, essentially. But it's it's almost, I mean, male and females, we we communicate in different ways. Yeah. And there's benefits to both. Right. And this was kind of an environment where females could just chat to females. I have a stat for you. I was I was about to tell you this before, okay. but I didn't get I didn't get to it. So I'm going to share it with everybody now. Stat time. This it's stat time. Listen up. <laughs> So the stat is that there are more men in leadership positions named John than there are women in leadership positions. So there are more Johns in leadership positions. That was a really bad. You get what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> hmm. Pun not intended. Um, that is very funny. Very women. interesting. So that's why I kind of wanted to, aside from my day job, pick this up and sort of start mentoring women into, into leadership positions. Huh. And sharing, and a lot of it is about sharing content, actually. So when we're there, we're having fun with it. We're doing selfies, we're doing the raw content, we're doing the video, yeah. and, um, and using all the right hashtags and things, and it's, it's, it's gaining traction. Yeah. And it's not, I'm not even doing it to gain traction, actually. I'm mm -hmm. just doing it so that we can meet and have a great time. Right. But organically, it's actually yeah. gaining traction, which is great. Yeah. So when you say the name John, is that John and Juan and, and John and every version of John or just the English J -O -H -N. word John? J-O-H-N. Wow. Okay, there are that's... more Johns in, I think it's like C-suite. Wow. Or even, even there's another stat, even just for top um, fortune, fortune businesses for, um, they look at how many women are in leadership positions in fortune business, like fortune 500, fortune 50 businesses. There are more men named John in those leadership positions than women in total. So um, so we can actually we can actually look at this on LinkedIn. Is there a way to look at just C-suite? No, I guess there isn't. It, it, depends, it depends what the privacy settings are. Oh, there so, you go. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this was, um, these are like, you know, business reports that come out annually. Got it. Um, so that's quite, it's quite a scary statistic. 
Very interesting. So cool. um, maybe John's really smart. Maybe if you have a son, call him John. You know, he's got a good chance of doing really well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so you are a contestant on I a know. show? Yes. What's, what's going contestant. on here? So I, hooray, am a finalist for Miss Great Britain, okay. which is the, um, the, what is it, the precursor to sort of Miss World. So it finds its each country's sort of representation from its national competition. So I'm in the national competition in the UK in February. And the reason I don't come from that sort of background at all, um, the reason I've decided to sort of add to my profile and try this out for the first time is that for the first year, this year, um, they're actually opening the competition up to people that are over the age of 27. So historically, oh, okay. and I think this is in business and I think it's in beauty and mm. I think it's in entertainment, there's been a shelf life when it comes to women. You know, there's, there's been this perception of like, oh, you know, you're, you're sort of over 30, so you're going to go and get married and have a child, so we're not going to employ you. Or mm. when, Do you know what I mean? There's yeah. been a bit of a glass mm. ceiling in that sense. And um, I think what Miss Great Britain are doing is fantastic. They've opened it up to people over the age of 27. Like, I don't know why anyone couldn't apply anyway they wanted to. So I'm, like I said, I don't come from that kind of background at all, but I really want to support what they're doing because I think it's really cool. Mm. And... Um, it's very scary to think you just, as a woman, you're literally just opening yourself up to be completely judged. <laughs> so mm. that's, nothing could be worse in my mind. It's, it's very scary. But I'm doing it as it's sort of almost a confidence building exercise. And to show people, I mentor a lot of young women mm. in the UK, to show people that actually, whether it's a career change later in life or whether it's just a new skill that you want to learn, just give it a go. It doesn't matter if you get laughed out of town. Give it a go, and, yeah. I, and I guarantee you, you won't get laughed out of time. You know, it'll all end well generally. So um, yeah. we have to try new things. So how did you get into that? I mean, do you come from? I mean, did, have you had? Do you have previous modeling experience? Or? No, not at all. So basically, um, how? I mean, I, I, I instantly, whenever I think of someone that's on a contest like that, I always think that they are, you know, an actor, actress, mm -mm. Um, model, you know, some sort of a spokesperson. So no, definitely not. So actually, I've been in marketing for the last fifteen years, and. I've loved it. But what I've really found is I've really applied myself to the business that I've worked in, which is great, right? And uh, that's, uh, that's what every employer really sort of wants. But what I've started realizing in the last sort of couple of years is that actually it's beneficial to you and the business if you focus on yourself as well and you build your own profile. And that is uh, everything to do with the work and, and what you do and attending conferences and, and you know, uh, being on podcasts and meeting great people but also extracurricular stuff as well. It's that human element of your content, right? People really connect with that because they go, oh, this is the, you know, a real person. Oh, yeah. they're out walking the dogs. They're mm -hmm. doing, you know, this, that, the other. They're struggling with kids working from home or whatever it may be. And um, so the reason I actually got into it was because I'm, in, I'm connected to a BBC World Reporter or journalist in London who um, I sort of filter a lot of our research, our original research through. And she was Miss Congo. Oh, really? Like, in Congo. Wow. And um, And anyway, she moved to the UK and started working for the BBC. She won over thousands of people this amazing internship with BBC Global mm. News and has worked her way up through the ranks. So I was in connection with her as just as a journalist, as a reporter. And um, she was talking to me about her whole story. And so anyway, I just sort of looked it up just out of curiosity. And then I saw that it was like the inaugural year where actually they were in the UK. They were saying, you know what, age isn't a barrier anymore. Mm. And as much as it makes me go, ooh, you know, shudder with terror at the thought, I thought this is something I really want to get up behind. And the fact that I stand up there at LinkedIn Ladies mm. every time I host it and go, hi, I'm leading this charge. I felt like, you know what? I feel like I need to do this to sort yeah. of prove to people, you know, I'm I'm doing what I what I say I do outside of you know outside of work. I'm sort of leading the charge a little. Yeah, that's amazing. I mean, I'm I'm really um, I'm really kind of inspired because you're definitely um, putting yourself out there and you know you're making yourself vulnerable because I think that when you do something like there's that, definitely an element of that. You know, you said that you know you open up yourself for criticism. You know, of course, there's a lot of positive attributes to this as well, but that's a reality. I mean, anytime we put ourselves out there. There's always going to be people that say X, Y, and Z, but we yeah, can't totally. really worry about that. Right? Totally. Yeah. Well, that's part of building your profile, right? Yeah. So, and no matter what you do content-wise, um, and the more you amplify it, yeah. the more uh, response you tend to get, right? Mm -hmm. So that's that's the whole aim of the game is we go, right, we want to grow our following. We want to um, promote amazing content, preferably video content, because that's what's you know absolutely ruling the present and the future. Mm -hmm. um, 
but also we need to be able to manage as we do that in parallel we need to be able to manage how we handle responses both positive and negative negative. and i think when you see channels where even when if you go if i go to a trip advisor example so i step away from even our own content for a second and i go let's go to a trip advisor example and we look at someone where um they're like a host of a hotel or a guest house and they've got all these positive reviews and they've all gone oh thanks for the great review it's been great hosting you la 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 and then for a negative review they don't say anything they just mm, ignore it yeah i mean there needs to be a level of response to yeah. our content that we're consistent with even when we don't want to face it i think that's really important because if you provide a really well-worded friendly understanding response i think that's that's a good thing that's a good thing yeah. and we just need to be prepared when we're dabbling in the content world that you know this is going to happen. There are going to be there are yeah. going to be bad things that come back. There are going to be people booing me off stage, probably. But you just have to deal with that, you know, and go. Yeah. You know what? I'm at a point in my life where I need to just shake it off. Yeah. And of course, there's a, there's a, a certain amount that sort of penetrates where you go, ouch. But yeah, mm -hmm. that's okay. It goes with the territory. All right, guys, we are back, and now actually we're using a blue Yeti mic. So you're going to notice that the quality of the sound is a little bit better. So we just kind of we just kind of uh, boosted that, and uh, it should sound pretty crisp. Um, so Chicago, mm -hmm. what's been your experience? I've loved Chicago. I've never been here before and really liked it. Yeah. It's, to be honest, I'm from uh, Auckland in New Zealand originally, and it's very similar. Oh, so actually. that's where you grew up? Or? Yeah, that's where I grew up. It's very similar in terms of just like nice city skyline, beautiful waterfront, um, lots of green spaces, mm. uh, very vibey, like it, okay. really like it. Mm. Enjoyed my time, glad I came here. So what, talk to me about the, um, the Kiwi culture. It's very chilled. Um, it's very relaxed, okay. I, I, you know, and there are good things and bad things that go with that, I think. Um, in terms of business, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, not as much as in the States, obviously, because you have such a huge population, mm -hmm. but a lot of people that are business owners, they have great ideas and they, they start businesses. Mm. Um, Why do you think that is? And these are the locals or, or the immigrants? No, 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 lo like locals, well, mm. both really. Um, so even the, the immigration culture is very inclusive. It's very well set up. It's, mm. it, we, we sort of go, okay, we, you know, it's very pro-immigration. We're such a small population. I mean, it's less than 5 million, which is mm. tiny. Mm. And then as part, of that, as part of that immigration process, people are very well supported mm. into education, jobs, communities, and things like that to just make everybody's lives so much better, right? Mm. So, um, but what I like to think, I mean, I studied, I went to university there. What I like to think, and maybe this is the same everywhere, I'm not sure because I haven't studied and gone to university everywhere, is that you're taught, I mean, in school, you're taught things. You're taught physical things. Um, in university, you're taught to think. And I think a lot of people um, coming out of Kiwi universities, because we are so isolated and so far away from everything, mm. is it's like dream dream big and, and give it a go. And it's a, mm. quite a supportive environment. So you're taught to think and you're taught to have these ideas and then people just give it a go. And I think New Zealand, the reason why a lot of big um, enterprise businesses use New Zealand as a bit of a pilot study, so things like Coca-Cola, for example. In many cases, New Zealand are the first place in the world to, to get to try a lot of things because they use New Zealand as like a live pilot study. Mm. So it was like vanilla Coke back in the day. They were like, oh, we'll just try it there first. Oh, really? Yeah, before it's released. <laughs> you know, um, so there's loads of things like that where they just sort of, we're sort of like the guinea pig population, you know. That's interesting. And then when yeah. did you move to England? So I lived in the UK a few years. I've, I've basically I, when I left university from New Zealand, I, I moved out. I went to the Great Barrier Reef, lived on a private island for a couple of years, working for an amazing resort, loads of fun in water sports, diving, in my free time, awesome. Wow. Then I moved to the UK. Uh, every, I'm just, I'm all about the experiences. Um, slowing down on my older days today. Um, <laughs> then I moved to the UK because I really wanted to do the London experience, and I highly recommend for anyone that has that itch, just mm. do it. It's an amazing yeah. place. And then I ended up working um, well, from London. I moved to the south of France and started working on super yachts. And I did that for many years. You, you worked on what? I'm sorry. Super yachts. Okay. Private yachts. So one of actually I worked for two American uh, people. One was the Walmart family, the, Wal the Waltons, mm. and the other was uh, someone called David Geffen, who set up Geffen uh, Records and DreamWorks Pictures. And so. Um, yeah. And then I worked for a vodka Russian guy. And so we got to go to these amazing places all over the world, everywhere from sort of, you know, um, the Galapagos Islands mm. to actually went to New Zealand, Tahiti, you know. So Alaska, you, you basically lived on these super yachts for yeah. a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, That's yeah. incredible. It's a great, you know what, it's a great These are like 50 million, 100 million dollar yachts. More, yeah, crazy. So wow. the yachts are like half a billion and then with the everything in the interior made of gold, it's like a billion. So yeah, Okay, so insane. can I, I want to see one of these so I can type Dev, David Geffen's yacht. Is that fair? Yeah, so it used to be uh, Larry Allison's Oracle, so um, they used to co-own it, and now David bought it. 
Rising Sun. Yeah, that one doesn't. It doesn't look very nice from the outside. It's quite like. Uh, not very nice. Wow. That's if you incredible. look at Motor Yacht Serene, that was a beautiful one. Motor Motor Yacht Serene. Wow. So you lived on this yacht. Yeah. For, Google it, everyone. Motor Yacht Serene. That is. Um, enchanting. So you know, multiple helipads, pools, DJs. We had a lot of cool guests on here. Wow. Let me tell you. Um, I mean, this is right out of a rap video. Well, you know, Sharon Stone hit on my boyfriend when we lived. We, 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 I met my, my fiance. I hate it when that happens. I hate it when rich <laughs> people hit on my boyfriend <laughs> in front of me, and I'm not allowed to do anything because I'm staff. So it's like, I'm standing there going, like, Sharon, back off. Um, uh, so, yeah, no, it's insane. So we, we literally, if, if you find yourself at any point poverty-stricken but wanting to travel, get yourself a job on a yacht. Wow. That's, a, that's a great life hack. Yeah, and you, you know, it's a life hack. And yeah. it's one of these sort of secret industries. Yes. Um, but from a content perspective, yes. Oh my God! You know, you sign all these confidentiality experience. Um, oh yeah, confident, yeah. You know, which obviously go down the drain after a couple of glasses of wine, right? And you say it on a podcast, but um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But other than that, you know, you're very restricted yeah. in what you can post and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. So your life is almost a bit secretive. It's almost a bit sort of. Do you know what? I would almost c consider it to be similar to, to a military life in mm. many senses because you're very secluded. You're not allowed, or you don't necessarily have contact with people all the time because if the owner is on board, all the bandwidth goes mm. to them. Right? right so you can't be sitting there streaming game of thrones because they want to stream russian television off satellite so all the bandwidth goes to them and you yeah very interesting cool yeah got it okay so we talked about chicago we talked about linkedin ladies we mm -hmm. we spoke about i think there was something else that i really wanted to talk to you about oh i think it was sort of leaning into us as personalities. I, I want to touch upon that a little bit. Um, talk to me about your experience. You mentioned something when you were on stage or I think about this event. Talk to me about that a little bit. In terms of uh, personal, different? Um, well, I say, would say leaning into who we are and like us as personalities and sort of the this things that we project and you know how to be how to be your most honest self. How about that is the question? Yeah, definitely. I think, again, that's that's really topical. Everybody's talking about authentic content to the point where it's almost like the word authentic. You sort of go, ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and why but, is that? Um, why is that a cringy word? Um, just, because, just because it's used a lot, I mm. suppose. It's being used a lot at mm -hmm. the moment. And then that cycle will pass and authentic will be a, a word that is, is okay to use again, I guess. But yeah. I guess we're just, we're so inundated mm -hmm. in our work lives in our private lives, whether it's content that we're producing for work purposes or whether it's something that we do in our spare time. Like I'm sure I speak for everyone when we have friends on our social media channels that are almost yeah. broadcasting their lives mm -hmm. in an unreal way. And I've, oh, I've, yeah. had, I've had to take detoxes from social media because mm -hmm. social it's media made detoxes. me feel bad. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Yeah. I log on. I'm not working on super yachts anymore, and I've still got these friends that are, and it's like, oh great, someone's in the Mal in the Maldives, and I'm sitting here and it's raining, and I feel depressed about it, <laughs> you know. And so, no, but you, you know, I've right. had to take detoxes because there are there are people that um, almost self promote on the social side of things, not even mm. on the business side of things, and so I think there's a balance to be had. I think it, it almost depends where you're from a little bit. I know basically in in the UK, in Europe, I know in New Zealand as well. We're, we're a very quiet bunch in terms of self-promotion. Mm -hmm. It's considered very cringy, mm. and it is. Like, I, I, I feel like that as well. I feel like I've got to sort of break that barrier down a little bit. Yeah. But we were talking about this before, actually. Like, nobody is going to sing... If nobody else is going to sing your praises, then you need to put your best foot forward yeah. yourself mm -hmm. and take that opportunity. And there is no better time than now, and I don't, I don't mean that in sort of a cliche sense, I mean physically in the digital world, no better time than what there currently is now in terms of the channels and um, technology available to us to do that right. and to get your personality across. And don't feel you have to mimic anybody, just be yourself because that's really what yeah. sells because that, that makes it sound like it's a business transaction. Right. That's what appeals. Yeah. There's a woman that I follow um, on YouTube. I'm not even one of these YouTubers at all, but I've just been pulled into it. She's, um, she's actually a beauty vlogger oh, and okay. I don't follow her for the beauty. She's just hilarious. Who is this? I don't know. Jamie someone. I just put Jamie um, small hands makeup video because she just takes the piss basically. And I just, I just find it so funny. So I'm I'm just googling Jamie San Jamie Small Hand what is it? Can you read that? Jamie Small Hands makeup video. Okay. So what's your tiny hands? Jamie French. There we are, people. We found it. Okay. Jamie French makeup French tutorials. Not that easy, but grammarly helps. This Do you use grammarly? Is grammatically I did, but then I got sick of all the. Um, she's oh my gosh. She's hilarious. <laughs> and she's a fantastic singer. Hey guys. <coughs> 
Someone performing. yesterday told me I'm a good singer. I'm so excited for today. And I'm a drummer. I don't sing. Today we did Maybe you should the stop tiny singing. hands yeah. makeup challenge. We did a spring makeup tutorial, as you can see. Just kind of a fresh, wow, she's great. spring makeup look. I love her I vibe. I on Instagram story using tiny hands at her work, and I, it instantly came to me like, I... Oh my god. <laughs> Honestly. Wow. She just, I, I, she's very um, self deprecating. Well, th I mean, what I love about this is that, you know, she shows herself without makeup. And that's honest. I mean, that's what she looks like. That's yeah, the for, truth. For me, I totally don't even follow it for the makeup tutorial yeah. aspect. I follow it because she's hilarious. No, this is great. She does other ones where it was like, um, and she she does it with a, with a, with a serious stance, mm. and it's like um, you know the '90s clubbing makeup look, which was like horrendous, you know, where, you know, no Zoolander was, style. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nobody was famous for good looks in the '80s and '90s. Let's face it, uh, we've, we've all been there. And um, and yeah. so she she does it, but completely serious face. Like, okay, well, what you want to do is find the complete wrong tone of foundation, and just slap it on, don't worry about anything else. Mm. And it, it's nothing about the makeup; she's just hilarious. So that's cool. cool. Jamie French, check her out. Very cool. So, anything else? Anything else you wanna you wanna bring up? Darling, I could talk for days. Okay. But you know. Yeah. Um, so I you're gonna not. be so in about what six months time you're gonna be the winner of that um, the pageant. Can I call <laughs> it a pageant? I don't like the name pageant. I like um, contest. Better. Contest. Because so in about and when is that? It's in February, so it's oh, all okay. live uh, TV. You know, it's, I mean, it, it airs. You know, um, as it, I'm sure it does here with Miss USA. Very cool. So it's quite scary. And then, do you have to get voted? No, it's based, or on, is it based judge, on judges. Judges. Okay, got judges. It. So it's like um, a closed room. But there are uh, things that come into into play. So over the next six months, we have uh, things like publicity that is measured, charity like fundraising and all that sort of stuff that is measured as well. So it's interesting because I'm connecting with all these girls that have been really into pageants mm. for like, you know, since they were knee high to a grasshopper. Mm. And I'm coming in at the ripe old age of 32. Um, for the pure reason that they've opened it up to us old ladies and giving it a go. <laughs> and isn't it ridiculous though? 70, 27 is so young. That's the whole, that's <laughs> almost the, that's the stand I'm trying to make is like, it's so young, nobody should be restricted yeah, to yeah. that or feel like they're over a hill at the age of 28 because it's ridiculous. Yeah. Life's only just begun. Yes. Um, yes. So yeah, it's, it's, there are a few measures that come into play over the next six months. Yeah. But ultimately, you know, it's, it is what it is. But they, they say it's like, look, look, it's not solely based off this, that, or the other. We actually want to find the right personal mm. personality and the right person. Right. I'm slurring my words because I've had two wines. You can't yeah. really see it because it's hidden behind the microphone. I can't but tell. But it's been a fun <laughs> podcast, let me tell you that. Yeah, this has been fun. Yeah, well, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> thank you so much this for having me, This has been really good, been yeah. Fab. It's been lovely meeting all of your team, yeah. like all the people behind the scenes that go yeah. into all of the work that yeah. you see. Has well, no, been we incredible. met in Los Angeles at the Digimarcon and now yep. here in Chicago, so it's been a good event. Yeah, it's fun bumming into people all over the world, right? Yeah, it's been fun. I mean, this is this was my first kind of video masterclass sort of keynote speech that I've delivered. So it's sort of a big deal for me in my career, you know, and it was definitely a, a learning experience for me. Do you know what? If you hadn't have said that, I would not have known because you've got one of these voices that sounds very uh, experienced. Mm. You could be a right, well, look, you're in front of a microphone. I think you've found your calling. Well, actually, it's funny that you should say that because I spent a lot of my time and a lot of my life behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, as the tech guy, mm -hmm. creating workflows, mm -hmm. automation, building stuff. And it wasn't until probably a year or two ago when I realized that, hey, listen, I just need to put myself out there. You know, if yeah. I want to build a brand, if I want to build a company, if I want to connect with people, mm -hmm. I need to leverage video yeah. because it's so scalable. So that's that was yeah. really my inspiration. And really, I think it comes from a desire to teach. So I actually had a really good chance to spend probably almost an hour and a half with, with a guy named Dr. Terry Shintani. Mm -hmm. um, that's his website, drterryshintani.com. But he was a doctor out of Hawaii that's into wellness and alternative medicine. And I had so much fun just helping him with his website. And we recorded the whole thing. So we have like four you know, video vlogs out of that. That was a lot of fun. So that's for me, it's cool. about the learning and it's about the connections. That's very cool. Yeah. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Thanks so much. See you guys on the next one. Don't forget to subscribe. See you guys. Bye. You are listening to Connection Loop, a podcast by Dub.com.